do, I'd like to welcome Gunther Schuler, who's visiting with us tonight. <laughs> Just celebrated an incredible milestone. We won't really talk about it, but he's, he's something else. This cat is something else. And uh, we had a commission from the Monterey Jazz Festival a few years ago. Uh, and Gunther wrote uh, a piece for us with excerpts of Birth of the Cool, which was uh, it's dedicated to John Lewis and Gil Evans, and it's really their music that Gunther reorganized for us, <coughs> put together with, with uh, interludes and different things uh, that we're going to record this next week. Gunther was a part of that session and played French horn on the original recording. And it turns out that he conducted some of the music also for that first date of the birth of the cool. Uh, he worked really closely with Gil Evans and John Lewis and, and Miles. I had asked for Moon Dreams to be done early in the session because it's also what we call a chop buster. It's very. Uh, uh, the endurance you need in the brass instruments to play that piece because it's all long notes and slow. Anyway, I'd asked for it to be done early and the producer of the session ignored our request and uh, put Moon Dreams on at the very end, by which time we were pretty tired. And we had never been able to play what I call the coda, the end of the piece, which was something that Gil Evans composed that was, had really little, very, very little to do with uh, the Chuck McGregor tune called Moon Dreams. He invented his own little composition at the end. And that is very, very hard at that time. It's still hard today. If I weren't conducting that right now, we would still be falling apart. It's that rhythmically complicated. So anyway, the only way we got through it after we messed it up three times at the last, we had like six minutes left or something like that. I said to Miles, listen, the only way we're gonna get through this, tired chops or not, if I conduct the ending. Because what Gil had decided was that there would be no drums at the end. Max Roach was supposed to stop playing. Now, if there had been a drum beat, we probably could have gotten through it, you know. But anyway, it's very classical. It almost has nothing to do with jazz time. So anyway, I ended up conducting it and playing the French horn at the same time. So that tune was real sp special for him to, to put together for, for this recording and is the first movement of the Birth of the Cool Suite. I was just very honored to be able to play the French horn with all these great musicians, you know, Miles Davis and Lee Conus and J.J. Johnson, Jerry Mulligan, they were all my heroes. And at that time, the horn was not yet more or less allowed into the jazz world, you know, it was still a foreigner. It's not a perfect world, and there's no reason to get excited about it. Although at first, you, you want to make it a better world, so then you do get excited when you're 20 and 25 and 30. But by the time you reach 50, you should, you usually say, oh, well, okay, it ain't the end of the world, you know. So, you learn. <laughs> 